Hello, welcome back to Questing Mayhem. I've been doing some mining uh, since the last episode to complete the minecart quest. And as you can see, we are nearly complete with it. All, all I need is a bit more lead. And look what I have found. We have some lead. We already have 30 in our inventory. This should complete the quest. Quest complete. I was able to find three pretty much overlapping caverns or uh, ravines right next to each other, so that definitely helped me out a lot with uh, with mining. And it only took me about an hour to come to gather all of these resources. A lot of them are back in the chest back at base, but I can definitely say I've made up for my mistake in making carbon fra fragmented carbon out of all of our coal last episode. While well, traveling back to base, you may notice that I have added a few waypoints. Uh, this is to help me remember where stuff is. For example, I've added a home waypoint there, so I know exactly where my home is at all times. It's very easy to do this. All you need to do is press the button that's key binder to creating a waypoint. By default, it's a J, and that's why I have it set to. It's all up in the big map, uh, which is just an expanded version of the circular map in the top right-hand corner. And you can click waypoints here, it's the little flag icon. And you can also see that I've died two more times since, well I guess a total of four times. Um, so three more times it, since the last episode. No, I died twice in the last episode, my bad. I've died two more times since the last episode, that brings our total death count up to, up to four. I can math. But I also have waypoints for home, the cave I was just at, and essence berries, which provide resources. I can get more into that in a future episode. We can edit or remove waypoints like this, edit, or we can have them on or off. We can dog them on or off. But now I'm going to toggle on and off with these death points. I do want to keep all of the death points, I think, in this, in this uh, series, just to see how many times I can die and see where those happen. And to create a waypoint, all you would do is waypoints, new, and you can type in whatever you want. Uh, for example, I can type in beach. We can set the color using this or the RGB scale. We can also set the coordinates if we want, if we don't want it to be at the place that we're at. But for now, I'm going to make it at the place we're at. Just default color, that's what I usually do. You can save it, and as you can see, it appears on in the in game. And there's a little marker there that shows you how many meters away you are from it. It remains consistent in Minecraft that one block equals one meter. So you can see our home waypoint in the, at the left, and we're back in here. As you can see, I do have my heads placed down here. I told you of three. I don't know where my fourth head went. That's fine. I've also expanded the base a little bit, or expanded our storage situation. I haven't really expanded the base. We've just been kind of placing down storage everywhere, but hopefully we should be able to fix that soon. I have a plan. But here you can see all of our resources that we've gathered. As you can see, I have many stacks of coal. We have a bunch of tin ore. We have some aluminum, we have some yellow light, we have a lot of iron, more iron, and even more resources in this chest. This is in addition to everything we have in our inventory. More tin, we can put our yellow light in here, let's compile everything I think. Let's take all of our resources that we've mined out from caves and the earth. That includes coal, redstone, minisiosha, dark gems definitely, carbon, fragmented carbon, sure. I am, no, we only want raw resources, I think. And we can place them in this chest just to uh, compile everything we have. We don't want gravel in there, no. We want all this in there. A lot of coal, as you can see. Some lead, some tin. Back in here, we have some uh, thumb craft shards. We won't be using these for a long while, but I thought it would be nice to have. I did grab things. Even if I knew we wouldn't be using them for a while, or if it wasn't completed by, or if it wasn't required by the quest. Because pretty much every single resource you find in Questing Mayhem is used in some way. And I want to make sure we have a supply of resources, because we will be using every single resource, every single ore that we mine. That's just the way Questing Mayhem was designed. I think we have everything from our raw materials, and we can sort this by pressing one of these buttons at the top. Uh, we can sort by sort in rows, we can sort in columns, or we can sort by default sorting. And 
because it's usually what I like to do. It just makes everything right next to each other very nice. We can get rid of these sticks and wood and dirt because they're not ores, they're not resources. So there we go. Also get rid of that redstone, uh, that uh, marble. There we go. There are all of our spoils we've gathered from the previous mining sessions, which isn't bad, I don't think. We can also claim our uh, mine grind reward. It already gives us 127 silver, 127 copper, 32 tin, and 127 coal. The description for this quest is now that you have some tools and a weapon, it's time to get some resources. And we can choose to charge to this quest, tin ingots, silver ingots, or reward bag. We've already we've claimed a reward bag for every single other quest we've done so far. So today, I think I'm going to choose tin, because I knew that is definitely used later on. There we go. So we have more resources now, this will be very nice, and we're about to get more resources this episode. Let's take a look back in our quest book. As you can see, the enchantment table has unlocked, and if I recall correctly, it just does not unlock any quests, correct? It does say unlocks one quest elsewhere, but that is in addition to another quest. So, for example, if we go to the storage quest line here, let's say the, uh, the mine grind quest unlocked the copper chest. It doesn't, but let's, for example, stake, let's just say it. Let's say it said it's unlocked the copper chest. Met several quests are able to unlock the copper chest, and you need to complete all of them to unlock the copper chest. So, for example, the mine grind may have been one quest that we needed to complete in order to unlock the copper chest, but perhaps also bread was the other quest that we needed to unlock the copper chest. So if it says unlocks one quest el elsewhere and no other quests unlock elsewhere, it may be because you need to complete another quest. You can't really know what that quest is until you just complete more quests. The more quests you complete, the easier it will be. But we have unlocked the enchantment table quest. The best way, the best and only way to make vanilla tools worth it in modern Minecraft. So we have the enchantment table. We get support blocks, we get a builder's block, we get a bookshelf, or we get an enchanted book. Let's take a look at the enchantment table recipe because it is uh, modified since the last, since, as opposed to vanilla. So as you can see, we already need an enchanted book. This can be obtained from a book surrounded with emeralds. Uh, of any variety. Flimfam is an enchantment that just makes a book enchanted. Flimfam has no other use. It requires diamond lattices, which requires five diamonds each and four nuggets each. A diamond nugget can be obtained from diamond seeds or diamond essence, or one diamond turns into nine nuggets just as gold or gold does. Obsidian tiles are also very expensive, they require 9 obsidian, so as you can see the enchantment table recipe is heavily modified, although it is very possible in the early game. We're not going to be working on that today though. Instead, I want to get gravel, because I want to complete the I am grout quest. To, to pro progress in Tika's construct, you will need grout, so if we take a look at the grout recipe. you will see that it requires some gravel, some sand, and some clay. So we need to collect all of these. Gravel, sand, and clay will also be used in the Xnello quest line, at right, pretty much right after the sim. And by the way, I also completed, I have it in this chest here, very special, I have 17 string. We need one more string in order to complete the sim quest. So, well, well, mining for gravel after we make a shovel. I say we should also be on the lookout for spiders as we were last episode. And hopefully we can find one more piece of string in order to collect a sieve. Let's go find some gravel, sand, clay, and hopefully a spider. We have some sand over here. Uh, this is our beach, which I'm not really concerned about destroying because it, if we clear this area out, it may be very useful for machines or some area later on. We will need to farm, we will need a magic area, and we will need a machines area within this playthrough. So I'm going to grab, let's say, two stacks of sand, two stacks of gravel, and if I can manage it, two stacks of clay. This may take a while, and it may be too much, or we this I may collect excess of it, but it's always nice to have excess resources in Questing Mayhem just because of how many resources everything requires. 
we will be using the sand, even if we collect excess of it. We will be using this gravel, even if we collect excess of it. And we will be using clay, even if we collect excess of it later on in the pack. Collecting gravel from one of the caves I mined in, uh, in between episodes, I have decided that I'm not going to actually collect clay. That's because Exnail Hello adds a way you can obtain clay from uh, sand and gravel. And to make proper use of that mechanic, uh, I'm going to instead obtain my clay using that method for this episode. We're almost done collecting gravel here. We already have two stacks, but I want to collect a little bit more just because I can actually rain mine this right now. I don't need a shovel or any special tool to rain mine. You can rain mine with your fist. On my mini map, I see that there's a spider right over here, so we're going to kill it right now just to get that one last piece of string in order to complete the super quest. We have 18 string now, that is the required amount. We can also, if we want, get another spider, but that is actually protected by a lot of skeletons, and skeletons have amazing aim. So, it may be a bit risky, but we're going to go up it anyway, and it's good at all out of here. We're not in the mood for skeletons right now, we're also not in the mood for creepers. Zombies, maybe, because they're not that big of a deal. But creepers and skeletons, we want to avoid if at all possible. So let's go back to base. Alright. I think first we should make the sieve. That's been a quest that we've been trying to do for a long time. And now's a good time to make it. So if, we, if I take a look at the sieve quest... Here we see it requires either four sticks and two planks, or two sticks and four planks. I don't, it doesn't really matter which way we go. We have two planks in our inventory, or two sticks in our inventory, so let's just do it this method. We're going to collect string silk methods. And if I didn't show you this before, if you have the resources in your inventory like I do, I have 19 string in here, you can click on the recipe or an item, and you can shift click this question mark here. And it will place all of the required ingredients from your inventory into the crafting table. This works for every single cra crafting table in the game. We have a silk mesh there. Just makes for easier, easier collecting, I suppose. And now, we can finally make a spruce sieve, because we have spruce wood in our inventory. Yay. Now, I'm not sure if that actually completed the quest. It did. Yay. So, we can choose either string or chests. I'm going to choose string because it's harder to claim, and we used all of our ATN string previously. Where'd that string go? There we go. It was just an inventory desync. It's fine. So, we're going to place our resources back in here. Uh, we have our gravel, and we have our sand now, which is amazing. We have a lot more gravel than we have sand, but it's okay. Let's take our gravel and sand, and see if we can use it for some various means we're going to be using this in x and as well as in Tinker's Construct. Sand, gravel, and dust. We need, we already have the sand, we already have the gravel, and we need the dust. Now we have a sieve, yay. But a sieve works best when you have something to sieve with. Collect some sand, dust, and gravel for sieving. Remember to use any eye. So what this implies is dust doesn't spawn in the world usually. It doesn't spawn next to gravel, it doesn't spawn next to sand. So how do you obtain dust, you ask? Well, make sure to use NEI, as the description says. So if we take a look at dust, you will see that this is dust right here. There's also ardite ore dust, cobalt ore dust. We'll be getting into all of these dusts later. If we click on just normal dust, though, after we click off the text box, we can see that's made from essences, or we can see that we can hammer, using the XNALO hammer, sand into dust. So that's what we're going to do. Now, we need a hammer. So let's take a look at a hammer. We want the XNR Hello hammers, which is at the very bottom here. We can make a stone, wooden, iron, gold, or diamond hammer. We have, we're not going to be using a hammer that much, because we're going to also be automating this process very soon. So, for now, I don't want to waste our precious resources. So we're going to make a stone hammer. Very simple, very cheap. It won't last as long as an iron hammer or a diamond hammer, but we don't have any diamonds and I don't want to use our iron. We have a hammer. Great. Now it says to collect 32 dust, so let's do that now. We can just place it inside, and once we break this with the hammer that we have in our inventory, we will, instead of getting sand, we will get dust. This is the intended method to get dust. Later on, you can automate this process using an automatic hammer, 
as well as any other hammering process you need. But for now, let's vein mine all the sand. And as you can see, we have 32 dust completing this sand, dust, and gravel quest. Now, it will get we, we get iron of various varieties. We have the crushed iron ore, which comes from sieving gravel. We have the oh no, we have the crushed iron ore which comes from sieving sand. We have the broken iron ore which comes from sieving gravel, and we have the powdered iron ore which comes from sieving dust. We'll be seeing a lot more of these types of these resources soon. So do we want sand, gravel, or dust? We don't have as as much sand as we do gravel, so I'm going to choose sand. And we have a bunch of resources. Awesome. Now we could smelt these resources right now to get some more iron. But we're going to be using a better smelting process very soon, which we will be making in this episode. Let's look at that. We want grout, right? But grout requires clay. We don't have clay. So, if we want clay, we're going to have to make a bell, and this will also give us clay as a reward. Bells are the next step in x -Nurla. They're used to get dirt from leaves, but most importantly, they're an easy source of clay. Look it up in any eye. So, we want us just to get an oak bale, or a bale of any sort, so type in bale. We will see that we have java bales with better bales, these hold storage. Uh, the wooden bales and metal bales are used for liquid storage. But we also have these x nailo x and x as just bales. For now, we just want a plain, simple wooden bale. And a bale requires wood and planks. Very easy. So, let's create a bale. One oak bale is complete. I believe the quest only wanted one, and it rewards us with a sapling, clay, and a choice of a reward bag or floor of witch water. We are not in need of the witch water right now. It is used for, I believe, creating mycelium and turning zombies into witches. We're not going to be using that right now. We have other means of getting mycelium and witches, so we're going to choose the reward bag. We get an oak sapling and a basic reward bag. And we get an electrical steel nugget. One. So it's not very useful, but this does provide at least some version of electrical steel, which otherwise would be a fairly mid-game item. So let's put that in there. I'm going to sort out my inventory, and I'll be right back. You will see also that we have unlocked the seeds quest from completing the sieve. This will lead us into food and farming. It will be very useful later on, but for now I want to focus on grout. We finally have the clay that we need for grout, and if we take a, one last look at the recipe, we will see that we can make it using clay blocks or clay balls. I believe this will give us more in total, so we're going to do this way. Actually, it may be the same. I think it's going to be the same, but you know what? We already have the clay blocks, so let's use the clay blocks. So once again, we can click the question mark here, and each craft of this will give us eight. Let's see how much grout we can make with all of this. We have two stacks, that's great. So, we can also get more grout here, coal or, or reward bag. I'm going to choose the grout just because I want to make sure we have enough grout to do what I want to do. Next, we make, wants us to make seared brick. The seared brick blocks are the main block used to form a Tinker's Construct smelter, which can double the ores. The smeltery will also do many other things. The seared bricks are used to craft other parts of the smeltery. So, what that implies is these blocks of seared bricks here. They're what form the multi block for the smeltery, which we'll be creating today. And the seared brick, in, uh, what looks like ingots, are used to form other parts of the smeltery. So, if we take a look at these seared bricks, we will see that these blocks are made out of the bricks, and these bricks are made from smelting grout. So let's smelt some grout. We will also want to, I believe, increase our furnace output very soon. But while that's smelting, I'm thinking we should work on creating some type of better storage because right now everything's just kind of kind of piled together, and I'm not a huge fan of it. And I was thinking right here would be a very good place for some type of storage area. I'm thinking our smeltery may go over here, or it may go back there. I'm not sure. But our mine, mine shaft is right down here, so it'll provide easy access. We also have a nice 4x4 area here, and what I'm thinking we can do is we want a lot of crafting tables nearby. This will make it so we know, because we may have, especially later on, we're going to have several 
items that we need to craft that will require a lot of other crafts in them. For example, let's take a look at something we took a look at. No, I want to show you a new something. Let's take a look at let's take a look at the kinetic dynamo. This is an item that we won't be using immediately, but we will be using more mid to game. So the, this kinetic dynamo requires flint lunch plates, which I just made in the pot builder, but here that we made last episode. That's easy enough. But it also requires steel rods, which is just two steel. It's like steel sticks. It's fine. But a copper wire coil, coil requires copper blocks. And LV wire coil, which requires treated sticks, which requires uh, and uh, uh, creosote and all of that. We'll get into this process later. It also requires graphite, which requires smelted coal, or ch smelted charcoal, in fact. And it requires redstone alloy, which, of course, is redstone and silicon in an, in an induction smelter. So, as you can see, Items sometimes take a lot of resources, so that's why we're going to create several crafting tables to go with them. And of course, we can stick items in this crafting table like so. We can make flint like this, and they'll stay in there. So if we ever want to craft flint, for example, a recipe, we, if we stick a bunch of flint in here, we can grab flint as needed from this, and it'll work out fine. This will be very useful in creating uh, a better storage and workspace. So, let us grab some planks. And I think we're going to want to make six crafting tables. I'll show you why in a minute. We can make three for now, but using more rubber wood. More tree, tree chopping will probably be necessary very soon as well. We can make six crafting tables. We're going to want to turn four of these into crafting stations, and then two of those crafting stations into crafting station slabs. You may see where I'm going with this. So we're going to place these in the floor here, not the slabs, we're going to place the four blocks. Well, I'm going to place the four blocks, you can do whatever you want, but this is just how I'm creating my workspace. So this provides easy access, we have a little bit of a step up to this workspace, and here we can um, have chests and anything else we want. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the means necessary to move these chests without breaking them. I believe a, uh, I believe a, what's it called? Something from storage drawers? Packing tape, maybe? This may allow you to move chests, I'm not exactly sure, but for now we can't even craft that, so we can only break these chests and move them down. But before we do that, let's make some chests so we can actually put some stuff into. That may require more trees. I have a storage situation set, set up. So here we have our blocks that we're going to be having a bulk of. This includes cobblestone, wood, dirt, and stones, and sands, and whatnot. This includes our miscellaneous items, uh, this is just stuff that probably doesn't stack or we don't really have a place for, just random stuff when I don't know where it goes. We'll get back to this chest in a minute. This is our nature's chest, this includes mob drops and seeds and pretty much any, any drops that are like loop kind of drops. This includes Minetio, saplings, spider eyes all the mob drops, and we're going to be including seeds in here before we have an actual farming storage. This is our unprocessed ores, and it also doubles as our resources that we're going to be using very soon, as in sand and gravel and whatnot, for the grout. So any unprocessed resources and also any resources that aren't, like, of, aren't a uh, material will go in here. That we'll be using uh, on the regular, regular. Here we have our refined ores and ingots, so coal and copper ingots and our dark gems and steak shouldn't be going in there, but that's fine. We sort that. And here we have a chest that I am very fortunate to have. This is our dump chest. Whatever items that we want to get out of our inventory that we can't find space for or don't have the time to find space for. We can go in here and they can be sorted out later. I'm hoping this chest doesn't fill up too fast. 
with that out of the way, let's see how much grout has been smelted. We have 25. We sh I should have been checking that furnace more to see when it would run out, but that's fine. We can also put more grout now. Okay. With this seared brick that we have now, let's see how far away we are from completing. We have the 16 seared brick, which is good. We also have 48 seared brick in total. Let's make our required... I think that may not be enough. Yeah, we need 32. Okay, so we have 12 seared bricks, which isn't going to be enough. But I think we should probably make some more furnaces to speed this process up. Still having trouble finding where I put things. So let's make three more furnaces that require, of course, three chests. And some cobblestone. One, two, three. You'll notice also with that I put these chests at the bottom for a reason. These chests connect to our crafting stations. So for example, if we want, because we'll be using iron ingots and coal and copper a lot. So if we want easy access to that, we can just click and drag it from the chest and use it immediately. Same goes for this, which I think we'll be using for if we, if, if when we're doing large recipes, we'll be using this chest a lot. So if we need to recall an item back, we can put this in here. This will definitely not be 100% done and will not be our full-time storage. We'll be using an applied logistics system by the end of the series, most likely. But for now, this will do. So I think I am going to go with the plan for putting furnaces back here. Like so. And we, we want coal, wherever I put that. We want coal in these. So let's grab a stack of coal and split it across three. There we go. We sort that. There we go. And we'll place that in here, in here, in here, like that. Okay, we have all this cobble that we don't need. And where's the grout? In here, of course it is. We're also going to split this across three. And split this across three. Um, sure. There we go. 21 and 11. So 32 for each. That's great. Let's see how much uh, seed book we have in here. 13. Maybe not enough, but we can see. We can make it work. 16, yeah, so we're going to need 16 more seared bricks before the quest completes. So let, I'm going to wait, wait it out, and we'll be right back. The furnaces are still smelting away. We have a bit more grout in the furnaces still. But we have enough seared bricks to complete the quest. Once we make the other 16. Forgot about that. We're waiting on one more piece of seared brick. That's enough. There we go. 32 seared bricks and 16 seared brick. We get aluminum brass ingots, 10 of them. We get a reward bag, and we get to choose between seared bricks or seared bricks. Let's choose the block form, because I want to make a really tall smeltery, and we're already smelting more than enough uh, seared bricks for all of the other materials or blocks that we're going to need. Opening the reward bag, we get 8 diamond nuggets, which is a very nice reward, considering I don't have any diamonds yet. This isn't enough to make a full diamond, but still, it's a very much appreciated stuff. So, let's put that in there, along with the other electrical steel nugget. Okay. We also have aluminum brass, which I'm going to put in there. We'll be using this very soon. And I forget that resources are down here. Okay, so, looking back in our quest book, we have smeltery accessories. The faucet is placed on the smeltery drain to pour out molten metals. Molten metal is poured onto the casting basin of cast casting table or casting basin. The basin can only turn the molten metal into blocks, while the casting table uses casts to form the molten metal into various other shapes. So we want to make two seared faucets, one, cra one casting table and one casting basin. I think the larger the smeltery is, generally the more casting tables, casting basins, and therefore casting faucets you want. I think I just want to make one casting table and one casting basin for now. The more faucets and casting tables and casting basins you have, the faster and easier it is to pour metals out of the smeltery. But for now, I think I'm just going to do one of each. 
And that's good enough because we have enough of the seared bricks to do that. So let's grab over here. We this is still snowing a little bit, but that's fine. Let's use this crafting table over here. I am going to keep this here just for easy access. So a crafting uh so casting table is like is like that. A casting basin is just that same recipe but upside down. And we want two faucets, which is just like a bucket. There we go. We have quest completed. So it's going to give us 16 more seared brick. And this is the seared brick in block form, but it's a brown dyed version of it. This was just to add some variety to the reward system. When creating quest mayhem, especially towards the end, I wanted to make sure that the rewards were actually rewards that people would want, and not rewards that just felt the same over and over and over again. And I wanted to add variety to it. I did, didn't want to just give the same rewards over and over again. And so this was kind of my way of doing it. It's kind of items that people may not know were there, or if they didn't know were there, they wouldn't make or use. And so I wanted to give them to those to people, just so they, they those items and blocks got a use. I don't know, that's my thought process. You'll be seeing a lot more rewards like that in the future. And just for that speech, I'm going to grab those, that type of reward for this quest. Awesome, so we have a stack of blocks for our smeltery. That's amazing. Where do we want to put the smeltery is another question. I'm thinking maybe here would be a good spot, but this is what I'm imagining to be the main pathway for it, so I'm not sure. We could also put it in here, but for now, let's put it in here, right here. This, yeah, this should be good because then we can also move or migrate our other tables that we made last episode to this spot over here. And this will be, I think this will be good. So, let's mine our spot right here. I want this inserted into the wall just so it doesn't block the pathway. And I, it also is going to be three deep inside. So that means we're going to create a three by three for the interior of it. And then we need to make a space for the walls. So that means that, so for example, if this was the first wall here, we're going to be seeing this multi. We also need another wall here. Corners are not necessary for this multi block. We need another wall here. And of course, we need to move this out in one. And the last wall will go here. I think this will be a good starting location for the smeltery. The smeltery can be as high as it, you want it, I do believe. So if we want, we can insert this into the ground even more. But for now, I think what we want to do is just make a basic smeltery just for the purposes of this video. It'll be faster to create, and I'm not sure if we need all that much right now, because just a smeltery this size will can hold a lot of items and can smelt fairly fast. This, this, well, the size of the smeltery doesn't impact the speed it smelts at. That is the fuel you use, and we're going to be needing to get lava for the smeltery, I just remembered. So that's something we're going to want pretty soon. But you know what? Let's add one more layer to this, because we have the resources. We have the power. Why not? So here's where our smeltery controller and basin and uh, faucets are going to go. And I realize I'm getting ahead of myself in quests because we have smeltery accessories too. The smeltery controller is used as an interface for the smeltery. Right click it to put items into the smeltery, see exactly how much fuel is in the smeltery, what is in the smeltery, and how much more time it will take for items to melt. It's like the heart of the smeltery. The smeltery drains are where the faucets go. Simply place the faucets onto the drains and put either a casting table or, or a casting basin directly under the drain. A seared tank is where, your fu where you place your fu the fuel for the smeltery. The smeltery uses only liquid fuel. Lava is a great early game source. Simply right click a bucket of lava into the tank. It can accept 8 buckets at a time. Now you have everything you need to make a smeltery. Learn how to construct a smeltery by looking at page 4 of the Mighty Smelting book you get as a reward for completing this quest. This book will also tell you more about much about what much more about what about the smeltery and what you you can do with it. This necessary information will still be provided in the des descriptions of this book. So again, once again, I did get a little bit ahead of myself, but that's fine. 
we have the seed brick ingots that we need to make all these. So I know the recipe is essentially by heart, so that's fine. We have the smeltery controller. We have the smeltery drains, and we're going to need two of those. And did I forget the other thing that we needed? Oh, and the smeltery tank. That I believe we need... Unless I changed the recipe for that, I hope I didn't. I should really be looking at these recipes more, but I feel... It's just I've been playing mod Minecraft for so long that I... I kind of have memorized some of these recipes. Alright, so it's that. I, I did not change the recipe, but it was not what I expected it to be. That's fine. So, we're going to need some sand. Just here. We're going to need three pieces of it. And just smelt that directly in there. Cool. So, once we get that done, we can place our... Hello? Oh. Oh, I guess I mined that with a stone hammer accent. So, if you mine stone with a stone hammer, you'll get... The stone pebbles, essentially, and that can be crafted in a 4x4 to create cobblestone. My mistake, but it is something that is in this pack, so it's probably good that I went over it. Uh, those will be placed in the random things chest, I suppose. Cool. Oh, and then this amber, which I collected, will go there. Or, shit, there. Glass is smelted up, and now we can finally make our not seed window. My God, my bad. We can make after one more sm glass melt. The good news is we now have a window for our small tree. Yay! We can see how much is in there. Great. Um, my mistake. Let's grab one more piece of sand and smelt that up. And while we're waiting for that, we can place down our smeltery controller, which I think will be right there. We can place down our two drains. We can place the faucets on those drains. And we can place our casting basin. Actually, no, I want the casting table closest to us, because obviously we'll be walking from the controller here. It says this is an invalid structure, I believe. Where would that be? Hold on. I don't know why it would be an invalid structure. I probably did something wrong, I would imagine. Everything looks right. Does this need to go one up? I think it may. Probably does. Alright, put that there. Put that there. There we go. Alright, so it did need to go one up. I always forget that. So, it's fine. We have these in the floor now, which is okay. And... We can walk from here, and then we are, uh, will probably, most likely, be mostly smelting in the, the casting table instead of the casting basin, so I want the casting table closer to where we're going to be walking as a smelter. Which is fine, as you can see, quite a bit of storage. You, it's hard to see without any ores being smelted in there, and we can't smelt anything yet, because, of course, we don't have our uh, tank, and we don't have anything to fuel the tank. Well, that will be sorted out very soon. Let's put the tank here. Let's get out of the way. I believe this can be placed anyway. And now I need to go on an adventure after collecting a bucket to get lava. We want as much lava as we can carry, essentially. So I don't know how much that should be. We have this in here, which I'll just put in the random things for now. Cobble will go up here. Why do we have a second smeltery drain? Oh, because I replaced this with a non smeltery drain. Cool. Good to know. Okay. Let's create a quick bucket, or let's create two. Yeah. I don't believe this was changed. I sometimes hard to remember my recipes. There we go. Is it approaching day or is it approaching? night. I think it's approaching night. Which is fine, because we're going. I'm going to go to back to the cave again and collect more lava. So we'll be underground anyway. I'll be right back. Okay, change of plans. Like the clay, we're not actually going to be collecting the lava. Instead, we're going to be obtaining it through ex-near-hello means. I don't know why I didn't think of this before, 
but it's something that X Nero allows to do, uh, and it will allow us to conclude the X Nero section of this quest line, as well as talk about more about X Nero and complete more quests. But we do have two unclaimed quests here, and it gives us a bucket of lava. Of course, it does. Amazing. I'm going to take that because I don't know my own mod pack apparently, and we're going to be collecting the gravel because that has better save opportunities, I do believe. So, next uh, x Nilo, we want to get to uh, the Crucibles here, but we shouldn't be looking at that just yet. We want to get to Gravel, Sand, and Dust. Craft the three types of iron you, you got into blocks. Please note that a t type of iron gravel ore does spawn naturally in the world thanks to Tinker's Construct. This is the wrong type of iron gravel ore, and the quest will not accept this type. Will not accept this type of iron gravel ore. Please craft the iron, iron gravel ore added by Xnero mod. Look up the blocks and items to see how to craft them. All right, so we want to craft iron or gravel, iron or sand, and iron or dust. So if we type in iron or blank, we should get iron or gravel, iron or sand, and iron or dust. We can also get netherrack versions of these, but that won't be necessary for now. And the the um or gravel it's talking about it from Tinker's Construct is actually the same uh, gravel we have in gold form outside. And while it's on my mind, I'm going to collect that right now just so we have some more extra gold because gold is always nice. Yeah, so the gold is right out here and we combine this with a shovel using Bane Miner. And it gives us, of course, Gore, gravel, ore. We will be smelting this into the smelter very soon, but until then, we'll place it in the unrefined ore's chest. Until we get the smelter up and running, we do have a lava bucket to get it up and running, but I want to create more lava and make a better source of lava, because one lava bucket won't last very long in the smelter. I want to make a constant source of lava using x -Nailla. And I'm thinking we'll put that... I'm thinking the civil will be somewhere over here. We should be moving these as well. Um, I can do this later, but we'll do it now, because why not? So, I'm thinking Echnello will be over here. This will be where the sieve is, and I guess the lava production as well. Sponsored by Echnello. And the Tinkus Construct stuff will, of course, be with the Tinkus Construct Smeltoid. Which will be right here. I think this, this is working out real well. So we want the stencil table, the pot builder, well no, we want the, yeah, and then the, no, then the pattern chest. There's a specific way to do this because, as you can see, or as you can't see, I don't know. Oh yes, uh, so you take the stencils in here, which we can just put in there for now. You take the stencils, you can make stencils out of them, you put those stencils in here in the pattern chest, and then... The pot builder connects to the pattern chest, so you can take patterns out and put it into the pot builder to make your pots, and then you make the tool station. So it's all an assembly line, and it's all in the correct order. Yay. Where were we in the quest? Right, so we wanted to make iron ore gravel, iron ore sand, and iron ore dust. This is easy. Just take the broken iron ore, put it into 4x4 to create iron ore gravel. We'll do that with ours. Create this by... create sand by uh, combining the crushed iron ore and create dust by combining the powdered iron ore. There we go. Quest complete. It gives us a chance cube, which is the first chance cube we, we obtain in this series, along with a choice of silver, tin, or copper. I'm going to choose silver because silver is rare, and I think I only have a few bit of it. There's also a quest for clay, and it, uh, it, the description talks about the Xnerla way to obtain clay, which I have yet to go into detail, detail about. Use NEI to see all the recipes for clay. Find the one using the bale and and do that one. You don't really have to make clay using a bale. If you are on a regularly generated world, you can find some underwater. But let's do as the quest description says and look up the recipes for clay. It's a 3x3 three three recipe in this pack. You, in vanilla, it is a 2x2, two two, so clay is a bit more expensive in this pack. Uh, you can also look at the origin. origin uh, menu. This is works for ores as well. And you can see this little graph here that shows how uh, 
where, what percentage, or how likely a certain resource is to spawn at a certain Y level. So for example, the best Y level to find clay is in as a Y level 61. But you there's a it spawns 0.09% of the time at Y level 55 and 0.35% at Y level 64, just for example. And that's how I, I used that to find, for example, lead ore as well. Because I was having struggling finding lead ore for the Minecraft quest. So I went here and found the origin and saw that the best place to mine was around Y20, so it was a bit too high. And eventually when I got d down deeper, I found what I was looking for. And so this chance cube here. Chance cubes are common rewards in Questing Mayhem. It, they're added by a mod called Chance Cubes. And if you've ever seen the Lucky Block mod that was around uh, many, many years ago now, they're essentially like that. You place them down, and if you when you break them, they have a random chance to spawn a random event, or spawn a random item. They are very, very destructive. They can create TNT that explodes all around. They can create a rainbow room. They can create a shrine. There are many generated structures that they can create. And I think right here will be a good spot, because we don't want to do this too far to the house. By the way, these also have a recipe for them. This is extreme crafting. A very end game recipe. It may not look like a lot, but each of is pretty much com entirely made of light blue blocks and blue blocks. Blue blocks require pretty much everything that is blue in Minecraft. And light blue blocks require pretty much everything that is light blue in Minecraft. So as you can see, very, very expensive. By the way, these require two, 250, 25,890 diamond blocks. And same for all of this as well. So it's fun. But for now, let's place it on the chance cube. And as you can see, it's uh, it's deadly. So if we put this in our house, for example, it would be bad. Very bad. So whatever you do, I do not suggest putting chance cubes any place where you actually care about. Do them far away from your home, and that may cause a forest fire. Shoot. Only you can prevent forest fires. Put out your chance cube ignited fires. Thank you. Uh, you know what? Just, just mine it. Just mine it. It's too late for the tree. It's too late. Uh, these, these blocks can just burn. As it said, it, you may have seen in the chat, some people just want to watch the world burn. There we go. I don't think it should cause any more problems now. Yay. Alright, that was our fun for the day. Let's go back to quests. Getting back on track, we still have the clay quest to uh, claim, and I never actually showed you the clay recipe. So, that I intended to show you. Uh, so it's a 3x3 three three recipe, sure. Uh, you can sludge boil it or gen, sure. And it looks like that quest description may actually need to be changed, because this the uh, barrel recipe does not show in any eye. That's fine, that's why this mod pack is on 0.017.1, not 1.0, because there are still bugs. And that's partially why I'm recording this playthrough and playing through my pack, so I can make sure there are bugs like these that I can squash. Because this is a really simple fix, um, but should not be included in a full release mod pack. Anyway, luckily for me, I have memorized the, um, the recipe that I want to show you. So, what we need to do is uh, go to the X and Yellow section here, place down a bale, and we're going to use our two buckets, or just one bucket, I suppose, because we only have one bale. And we're going to place that here, or collect water. Just just collect water, it's, it's, it's not that complicated. Uh, run past the zombie, back into home, and place water in the oak bale. And from there, you want to grab dust, uh, just the normal X and yellow dust, not the ore dust, and right click it on the bale. This will create a block of clay, which of course turns into nine clay blocks. It's much more beneficial in this pack to convert clay using the crafting table instead of breaking it, because when you break it, you still only get ore. That is something I could not change in Questing Mayhem. I can't change, or I don't know how to change, the 
or the drops of a block. I can only change the recipes. So if you want to make the most use out of your clay, make sure to craft it into nine, don't break it into four. But that's the way to get clay question, uh, modded uh, exterior style. So it's going to give us four more oak barrels, that's great. And either bone meal or reward bag. We're going to be needing the bone meal very soon because it's used with crucible. So we're going to collect the bone meal. And now this is a little weird. Don't don't worry about it. Um, there's the unfired crucible quest. The next and final step in your Xenero tutorial is to make a crucible. Crucibles are primarily used to turn cobblestone into lava. This is this is the method I was talking about. You you need to you need a fired crucible for it to be useful. But until the next quest, just make an unfired crucible. So we want to make an unfired crucible, and that requires porcelain clay. Porcelain clay is obtained from clay and bone meal. We need seven, we have nine clay, and we have a lot of bone meal. Porcelain clay, done. And we can make it into a unfired crucible with a lot of zombies outside. I'm not a huge fan of that. Anyway. We have the bone meal, we have, so we have the unfired crucible, we get clay, we get a choice of bone meal, reward bag, or a chance cube. We've seen chance cubes today. We have bones, and I'm not thinking we're going to be needing bone meal soon anyway. So I'm going to claim the reward bag. And we get a drum, which is appropriate, to be honest, because a drum holds exactly 256, I think that's 256 buckets of a, any liquid. And since we're trying to make lava and all this. It makes sense that we'll be using this for lava storage. Next quest. I already know what it is, but just so you can see it yourself. Next quest is the fired crucible. Smelt an unfired crucible in a vanilla furnace to get a fired crucible which you can use to make lava as described in the unfired crucible quest. So, very very simple, probably one of the most simplest quests in the entire pack. We just need to make a crucible by smelting it in a furnace, like so. That completes the quest. We get a magnetic orb, 64 lava. I'm not even going to talk about the chance cube because we already know how that goes. And if we want to play it safe, we would make a hole for this magnetic orb, but we're not playing it safe. We're playing it questing AM style. There we go. Two buckets of lava. Amazing. So, but now let's play, put this here, and we'll use the lava to heat the crucible, which will in turn provide us more with more lava. And if we right-click the crucible with cobblestone, it will fill up with cobblestone and start turning into lava. You can see at the very top of your screen, it says solid volume is decreasing, fluid volume is increasing, the melting speed is two times, so that's twice as much as it would if we just used a torch, which is the weakest melting speed you can go. And it shows us the exact amount of fluid lava and the exact amount of solid cobblestone in it. We did not place over a thousand cobblestone into the crucible. I don't know why it's showing a thousand cobblestone. It probably means, like, I don't know, something. But once it, it once it reaches, I believe, a thousand cobblestone, uh, or a, a thousand lava, or, yeah, a thousand lava, uh, we can right-click it with the bucket and obtain another bucket of lava. But until then... Let's place this excess bucket of lava into the smeltery. You can see that this the uh, tank has started to fill up with lava, and we can now smelt things finally in our Tinker's Construct smeltery. This will be the last thing we do for this episode. So if we open up our quest book, we can see that we have Baby's First Cast. Get a seared brick and put it on the casting table. Then smelt some aluminum brass or gold in the smeltery and pour it over the brick. P.S. Don't take the title of it the wrong way. P.P.S. If you hate Tinker's Construct, I'm not sorry. After completing this quest, you have a butt-ton of casts to make. And we can see that here, it requires you to create every single cast in Tinker's Construct. But, for now, we just need to make an ingot cast. And, the don't take the title the wrong way, that refers to a baby's first cast as in, if a baby broke their arm, they would require a cast. No one wants a first cast. No one wants a baby to have their first cast. Anyway, do you like my puns? I hope so, because there's, there's going to be a lot more of them soon.
expect that and I'm not sorry. So we want to use a we want uh I'm going to do I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone here. We have this gold gravel ore. Gold can be used to create casts by pouring it on to the casting table, but this is gold ore. So it will also double in the furnace. So for example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven gold ore in this smeltery. And you can see how close it is to a, to a reaching molten point using this bar at the top. And once it's in there, you will see when we see the fluid in the smeltery GUI that it will double in three, two, one. So we now have 22 ingots as opposed to the 11 ore that we smelted. So that shows that the smeltery does in fact double ores, and it's very useful to have. Um, I recommend using the smeltery to double your ores from here on out until you get a better way of automating resources or anything like that. But as you can see there, we put an iron ingot. It does say to use a... Um, a seared brick in this, but you can use any old other ingot. The seared brick would also work just fine because as you can see, it has the ingot shape. But we now have the casting table with a ingot cast on it. And if we right click the casting table, we get the ingot cast. And that completes the baby's first cast quest. Since we waste one of the iron, I'm going to collect two more iron. And we also get four gold nuggets and four aluminum brass to continue working with to continue working on the casts. We'll be getting into more casts as we need them going along. These casts do not um, unlock any other recipes or any other quests, so as long as we complete them before we finish the rest of the book, we can work on them as needed. So whenever we need a hammer, for instance, we'll be making the hammerhead cast. Whenever we need a tool binding cast, we'll be creating a tool binding cast. We won't be making them these all at the same time. Uh, next episode, I think we will be making a Tinker's Construct tool and probably a weapon, and probably getting into f some farming because I'm running somewhat low on food. I have some steak in here, and I have some pork chops around, but it's like a more reliable source of food. That's next episode. Thank you for watching this video.